Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 17. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. This is Paul at Thessalonica. And this is an awesome scripture because in here we see how first century Christianity, the true biblical Christianity, and first century so-called Judaism are one in the same. Okay, let's get into this. This is Acts chapter 17 verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. Now before I get too far here, let's look at a map so we can really grasp what's going on here. Okay, just so you can understand here where we are on the map, we have Israel down here, we got Jerusalem, uh, we've got uh, Lebanon, Cyprus, and now up over here, uh, is where we are right now, okay? So uh, if you if the map were to be a little bit more, extended a little bit more here, you'd have Italy up this way, okay? So right here, uh, we came from Acts chapter 16. This is where they were at Philippi. So now we're coming from there, and we're going down through Amphipolis, through Apollonia, into Thessalonica down here. So we're actually following this blue line right here. Okay, now it's very interesting and it's important to understand that Thessalonica is actually the largest city, the largest hub of business and population in Macedonia. So this is where they are in Acts chapter 17. So back to verse one again, it says again here, now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. Notice, it doesn't say that they just started to plant a church there. No, they went to a Jewish synagogue. Now, a lot of evangelicals today, they would go there and they would just kind of, well, you know, they preach the gospel, but they wouldn't really go to synagogue. They would try to win converts over to Christianity, so to speak, and then they would build a church. But that is not biblical Christianity. That's not biblical evangelism. They went to the Jewish synagogue. Let's read on. Verse 2, Paul, as was his custom, key phrase here, as was his custom, went into them, and for three Sabbath days reasoned with them from the scriptures. Yeah, this is just packed, okay? For three Sabbath days. Now, obviously here when it says for three Sabbath days, it's talking about three weeks and specifically on the Sabbath day. Now it doesn't mention any other day except for the Sabbath day. So notice how Jewish this is. Okay, they went to a Jewish synagogue. They didn't plant a church, so to speak. They went to the Jewish synagogue, Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, okay? Now check out the last phrase of this verse. Reasoned with them from the scriptures, from the scriptures, especially because in those days, okay, we're talking about Book of Acts Christianity. We're talking about Book of Acts Church here. There were no New Testament scriptures. No New Testament scriptures. So they preached from the Tanakh. They preached from the Tanakh. They preached from the so-called, what we would call today, the so-called Old Testament. I hate calling it the Old Testament. But this was the text of the real, true book of Acts church, the Tanakh. If your church, if your pastor, or if you cannot preach the gospel, by using the Old Testament alone, you're not engaged in biblical Christianity. They preached from the Old Testament alone. Verse three, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. Let's just back up here for a second again. Explaining and demonstrating that the Messiah, the Christ, had to suffer and rise again from the dead. They explained it and they demonstrated it from the Tanakh. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? Because today, you know, preachers and churches, 
they would do the opposite. They would read from the so-called New Testament scriptures, but they wouldn't hardly even touch. Maybe perhaps they might touch on maybe perhaps one verse from the Old Testament. I mean, but they preached their entire message. They preached how Jesus should suffer and rise from the dead from the Old Testament. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas of the devout Greeks, a great multitude and not a few of the chief women. Here again, the word devout actually is synonymous with the word God-fearing, okay? This word denotes someone who is God-fearing, obeying the mitzvot, okay? Fulfilling the mitzvot, doing what any good Jewish person would do if they practice their Jewish faith. And not just a few of them, it says a great multitude. And it says, and not just a few women, not a few women too. In other words, there were lots, lots of them were won over by preaching that Jesus had to come and suffer and die and rise again from the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. From Paul's gospels? No, they didn't have that. From the scriptures of the Tanakh. Even if the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the epistles of Paul existed back in those days, they were not considered to be Holy Scripture. They were not considered to be Scripture at all, okay? Paul's letters was just that, just a letter, <laughs> someone's mail, okay? It was not considered to be Holy Scripture in those days. I believe based upon the evidence that we have, and we're going to get deeper into this as we go along, that when it says scripture here, it's talking about everything that we have in the Septuagint, which means the Tanakh plus a lot of other books, including some of the other sacred texts we haven't touched yet. And so I am excited. We're going to get deeper into this as time goes on. Verse 5, but the unpersuaded Jews took along some wicked men from the marketplace and gathering a crowd set the city in an uproar. Now here it says the TR, which is the Textus Receptus Manuscripts. In other words, the same manuscripts that are used to translate the beloved King James Version. So it says here the TR, the Textus Receptus reads, And the Jews who were unpersuaded, becoming envious and taking along, instead of, but the unpersuaded Jews took along. Okay? So they set the city in an uproar. Assaulting the house of Jason, they sought to bring them out to the people. When they didn't find them, they dragged Jason and certain brothers before the rulers of the city, crying, These who have turned the world upside down have come here also, whom Jason has received. These all act contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. So look at I mean, they said, these people have turned the world upside down. Listen, Christian, are you turning the world upside down? Are you turning the world upside down at your workplace, in your community, in your city, in your nation? Once you have the presence of God with you and you're preaching the truth, you can turn the world upside down. And notice here, it says, these all act contrary to the Torah. It doesn't say they act contrary to the Torah, okay? If they did, if they were preaching against the Torah, if they were acting contrary against the Torah, if they were eating pigs or eating shrimp or doing anything else against the Torah or speaking against the Torah, that would be obviously the, the greatest charge against them. Because consider this, these are Jews that are bringing the charge against them. Okay, so, you know, if they were saying anything against the law of Moses, if they were saying anything like a lot of Christians say today, that would be the first charge against them. Oh, they're preaching against Torah. Oh, they're acting in a way that's not lawful according to the Torah. But that's not what they said. Again, these all act contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. The multitude and the rulers of the city were troubled when they heard these things. When they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Now, next session, we're going to be talking about when they come 
to Berea. When Paul comes to the city of Berea, something very amazing happens and something happens that we can all learn from. So don't miss it. Until then, keep seeking God with all your heart. If you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.